and she gave me a strict eight minute time frame. I thought, well, I need something to control me uh, for eight minutes. So I'm gonna play in the background Springsteen's version of Purple Rain, which goes on for precisely eight minutes. <laughs> okay. The Prince one is either six minutes or 22 minutes. So I'm going with the Springsteen. That's all right. So when, when he stops, I stop. Um, okay, Car cartograms. We can all agree we love them, yeah? Now I've said this before at this conference and it strikes me that not everybody's on the same page as me. Uh, and it's been a, a massive user request uh, in the, um, the Ezra environment, which means I wanted it. So af after the, the relative success of the Terrain Toolbox that we did um, a few years ago, we had 20,000 downloads of that, which is kind of staggering. Uh, but we decided that we were going to do um, a cartogram toolbox because I can't persuade anybody to put it into the core product. So let's, let's go with a, a Python scripted toolbox. So I'm just going to, you can sing along by the way if you like. Um, so I'm going to use um, the uh, quite maudlin subject of mass shootings data in the US. I might have accidentally scraped this from the Washington Post, thank you Lauren. And um, so there's been what, 154 mass shootings since the mid 60s and well over a thousand people uh, have been uh, killed. So this is what we would normally do with, with that kind of data is create a choropleth, okay? We just aggregate the data up to standard polygons, create a choropleth, um, that's the number of victims of mass shootings um, by state, um, and there we go. But I, I think that's kind of boring, and particularly when we've got um, the actual location data as well, we could perhaps do something a little bit more interesting uh, than simply aggregating to polygons. So another fairly standard way of approaching this is, is just to do proportional symbols. Um, purple symbols and but of course we've got the standard problems whenever we've got a proportional symbol map of overlaps and that becomes difficult when um, a lot of these mass shootings are taking place in, in fairly similar locations okay so cartograms are a way of um, graphically disassociating geography from the map and just representing the statistical data and there's lots of different versions um, of them. So non-contiguous, contiguous, contiguous um, graphical ones, gridded ones. And so we've started creating this, uh, this toolbox. There's a lot of people been involved with this, not least one of our interns this, this year, Jingyi Li, who helped um, code some of this up because just like John, I can't code anymore. So a lot of people have helped me with this. So let's, um, let's go with uh, running the toolbox. I'm just, I've, I've already kind of run them, it's a geoprocessing tool, so rather than type all this in, I'm just gonna go through roughly what it does. So we take input data, which can either be polygons or points. Um, we can obviously specify an output feature class. Um, the property from the data, which I'm just gonna take as the victims. The shape here can either be circular for a Dorling cartogram or squares for a Demir's cartogram. And then we have a few other properties, like how many times the algorithm's gonna iterate to jiggle the symbols around a bit. Uh, and the various properties of the push-pull between symbols. Um, so, I'm going to run this live. You can sing along. Guitar solo. And so, we are now symbolizing, it's based on proportional symbol, symbols, but they're going to be... Um, look at that. Ooh. Ah, oh. come on. And so that's our, that's our Dorling cartogram of the same data. Um, I can obviously symbolize it a little bit better, um, do something a little bit more interesting, um, perhaps make them purple, for instance. Um, and also, if you've noticed, uh, the original cartogram was built with Alaska down here and Hawaii down here. That's how the algorithm um, created it, but it's really, really simple just to grab those and move them out to somewhere a little bit more um, appropriate. So that's the Dorling version, and these are all features now, so they work as polygons, and you can symbolize them as you would any other polygon. Uh, this is the Demir's version, and this is the 
density equalizing uh, Gassner version, which I know you all love. All right, you don't have to use it, you know. It's fine. Um, and the other one I wanted to do was um, a waffle grid. So perhaps we want to create a multivariate version um, of this, um, this data set. So remember, these are proportional symbols. Um, they're squares now, not circles. Um, I use the Demir's cartogram tool to um, shuffle those around a bit and to create a little bit of space um, to make polygons for those. And of course, we can do a number of different things with these, um, such as the dot density renderer to create um, red dots for those who, who died and perhaps orange dots for those that were uh, injured. I'm going to show you this one, which is the random points tool to create a series of random points. I'll come back to that in a moment. Um, but if we take the centroid um, of each of these Demir's polygons, we can run the waffle grid tool, which just because I can, I'm going to. Um, and I can use two different fields from the data set now, the victims and the injured, uh, rather than just simply one. Um, create a cell size, this case 20,000 meters or you know, 20 kilometers. Uh, let's run that. And this is effectively going to populate um, those shapes um, with a waffle grid, individual polygons for each incidence of data, but coded so that we can then symbolize it. So we know which parts of the waffle grid are going to be victims, which parts are going to be uh, those that are injured. So there's our waffle grid. Each of these is a single polygon. Okay, let's get rid of that because I've pre-prepared this one with uh, some symbols. This bit goes on forever, ever, doesn't it? The woe woe bit. So, so now the red ones are symbolised as victims, and the orange are symbolised as um, injured. We can go a little bit further. We could symbolise them using uh, Isotype, which is the international system of typographic picture uh, education um, developed by Otto Neurath and other people in the early 1900s, um, and perhaps use pictorial symbols um, instead of just colours. If I put on a, um, a reference scale and then zoom in, um, you know, you can start to symbolise things in a different way and the whole point about this picture language is to use symbols to actually try to tell um, a little bit of the story okay I know I've got 20 seconds left now so can happen it's left start again okay um, so the reason I wanted to show you show you that and talk about the random points is um, you can start to use this in some kind of interesting ways. Um, so this is the uh, Demir's cartogram as the base. And um, there, that says to me eight minutes is up, but there we go. Um, and then use these random points with a 3D picture marker symbol um, to represent each of these individuals. And I, I did like the way the Washington Post used, um, you know, real pictures, I guess, of real people to illustrate the sort of reality of this you know these aren't just red boxes or green um, orange boxes these are these are people so putting a human face on some of this sometimes allows you to um, tell a more interesting story or personalize it to a to a cent, uh, to an extent and you can begin to zoom around and look at the uh, the horror of this um, that was the that was pretty much the final thing but then Elaine contacted me yesterday and said you've got a couple of extra minutes so I rapidly went back to something else I've been playing with this year, uh, and I know Travis and others are going to be doing things like this. Um, this is our um, sort of ArcGIS workflow for creating transit plots or joy plots. So I created a, um, uh, a surface. In fact, it was just an IDW surface of the victims of mass shootings. I created a um, horizontal line and then densified it um, and then use the update feature by Z. Look at that, not Z. I'm, I'm assimilating. <laughs> um, thank you. Um, update feature by Z, and you attach all of the uh, data points from your underlying surface to the line. If you then just take that into a, a scene uh, rather than um, a map, 
and you can just flip it on its side and you create your, um, your joy plot fairly simply there. So I've already used my extra bit. I've used my eight minutes. Thank you very much. That's, that's it for this. Thank you, Ken. I know that's a tough subject, um, but we appreciate your humor as always. <laughs> and also, I'm sorry almost that I ever gave a talk about Prince's album covers at Nasus in Minneapolis. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm forever marked. That's it. Um, I just wanted to say very quickly before we do questions that the bell has not yet rung. You're not free to leave. I mean, you are. Um, but we have an announcement and a raffle drawing and a quiz after questions. So stay put. Um, have you looked at doing cartograms uh, that are block cartograms, hex cartograms, or I was thinking you could do a, a, a Voronoi tree chart uh, tree map out of that data. Uh, does, does your technique uh, allow doing um, block or hex cartograms? Um, so the gridded ones are kind of an interesting case because um, obviously it's geographically specific and you've got to maintain the adjacencies. Um, now a lot of people have built templates so you can download a template for the US states or the US counties or something like that and that's probably the way to go at the moment it's something we're looking at um, we are going to add hexagons to the um, the graphical techniques so the dawling the demirs we're going to add hexagon as a shape um, for that and you could fairly quickly just edit them into into line if you wanted to but um, that's a slightly different type Any other questions? Uh, and this will probably be available to download in two or three weeks, something like that. We've just got to tidy the code up, take out all the profanity. Um. <laughs> I wanted it yesterday. Jeez. <laughs> you can have it. Just, you know. Any questions on this side of the room? Okay. Thank you so much, oh, Ken. Thanks.